Never underestimate a woman with a crock pot and a can of cream of something soup. Is that a joke or just funny because it's kind of true? I can't tell. My name is Christine, welcome to the kitchen and all of the crock pots. Today we will be making a couple of recipes including some meats, some carbs, some desserts, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So if you love crock pots and slow cooking and definitely not turning on your oven in the middle of the summer, give this video a thumbs up and hang on to your hats because we're gonna get cooking right about now. In a seven quart crock pot or slow cooker or whatever brand you like to use, I have in here four pounds of chicken wings. It is one of my absolute favorite things to eat. My grandma would talk about back in the day when they used to just throw these away. So this was kind of like the garbage food. And now chicken wings are more expensive than boneless skinless chicken breasts in my area. It's so crazy. They become like this whole thing when they used to be the trash. Anyway, I have four pounds of chicken wings in here. I have my glaze that I just mixed up. You can check out how I made that right here. To make our sauce for our wings, I am starting with one cup of honey. Yes, that is a crap load of honey, but I do have four pounds of wings here. To that, I am going to add a half a cup of soy sauce. Little bit of garlic. I really, really like this little squeezy tube. It is so convenient. About two tablespoons of tomato paste. One, two. And I like the tomato paste tube a lot because you can store this in the fridge as well. Just a pinch of sugar. About one teaspoon of black pepper. Maybe a little, that's about a teaspoon. A little bit of water and it's time to whisk. Get all of this mixed together and then just dump it on all the wings. It is seriously that easy. And I'm just gonna pour this all over the top. This is like, you cannot get easier than this. I'm gonna just make sure everything is coated in here. If you wanna go the extra step, go ahead and sear these in a skillet before you put them in here. But Christine be lazy, so we're not doing that. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. Lid on and we're gonna cook this on low for three to four hours or high for six to eight hours, depending on when you're prepping it and when you would like to eat. I'm gonna go for the high because only cowards cook on low. Chicken wing time. And I'm gonna stir these wings on the top that kind of didn't cook in the sauce like, ah! <laughs> like everything else. What you could do at this point is kind of throw these in the air fryer or in the broiler just to get them a little crispy, but they are fully cooked, so you do not have to do that. Obviously, there is a ton of sauce to go along with this. Let's give this a taste and see how they turned out. Consensus on this recipe is I think it is a good idea to stick these under the broiler so they get crispy and then boil down this sauce with a little bit of cornstarch to make a glaze. I think that is kind of what these need. I love wings in all their forms, but I really, really like the crispy outside and I think a dipping sauce would be super nice. So those are my tweaks for this recipe, but the wings themselves are very, very tender and just like fall apart in your mouth. Now, before we make this Southwest mac and cheese, let's talk about the crock pot liner for a second. So I did show this once in a previous video and everybody, not everybody, a few people lost their minds. Something about plastic waste, garbage, things like that. And then in videos where I don't use this, everybody tells me to use this. <laughs> I'm using it for this particular crock pot because there's a crack in the stone and it will leak out. So I'm doing this to save a mess out of this crock pot without just chuck chucking the whole thing and going to buy a new one. I normally don't use them in the ones that don't have cracks, but this one has a crack. So there you go. There you go. Even though I do have this plastic liner, I am going to give it a little bit of a spray just so my pasta doesn't stick. You are gonna be amazed at how easy this is. To start with, I have eight ounces of uncooked, completely raw elbow macaroni noodles. I know, you're scared, right? In come two cans of diced tomatoes. This one has green chilies, like, uh, like Rotel, and this one has green peppers, celery, and onions. Both of these are going on top. Now, one and a half cups of your favorite salsa. I find this one from Walmart to be pretty good and very inexpensive. One and a half cups. 
there's one. I'm trying to get all my juice like on top of the pasta really nicely. Okay, and then you can save this for chips and salsa later for a little cooking snack. Now, two cups of shredded cheese. I'm gonna use this Fiesta blend. I figure a handful is about a cup, right? Yeah, that might be a little more than a cup. One, two, two cups of cheese. Believe it or not, that's it. Lid on. <laughs> Cook on low for close to four hours, three and a half to four hours, and then we'll check to make sure our pasta is cooked all the way. Trust me, it's gonna be okay. Mac and cheese. Now, I did unplug this because it got a little crispy on the side. And as you can see, the pasta is definitely cooked, but I don't think I need any more cheese here, so I am not going to add it. So I think I let it sit a little too long because the pasta is kind of falling apart. But I'm gonna try and, whoops, I'm gonna try and stir this without mushing it all to bits, and then we'll do a little taste de This is really pretty good, but I think I'm going to change the name to Salsa Cheesy Pasta because it's not really reminiscent of mac and cheese. So if you're expecting a mac and cheese, this is not it, but it does taste good. So just consider it like a pasta dish instead of, you know, your blue box. I feel like making a little bit of a cocktail for people and it's gonna be some kind of barbecued, tangy, little smokies because I love these guys. When I was a kid, my mom would make pigs in a blanket with these guys and some cheddar cheese and the Pillsbury Crescent Rolls, right, right? I mean, if you've had those, give this video a thumbs up. Now, I'm not making very many today, and I should be doing this in a smaller crock pot, but I don't have a little one. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I should get, you know, a small one for things like this, but you could totally like go crazy on the little Smokies, but I didn't want everyone to fill up on this, so we're just gonna do the one package today. And I'm only gonna add two more ingredients, and that's it. A half to one cup of either ketchup or chili sauce. This is a spicy ketchup, so I figured it's like a little bit of both worlds. And a half to one full cup of apricot or peach preserves. I went with the sugar-free on this one. So this one's just apricot, pectin, and citric acid, and that's all. So it shouldn't be overly sweet. And I know I said like a half a cup. I'm really not gonna measure, so that's probably a third of a cup a third of a cup, <laughs> one cup. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this a little bit. Obviously, if I had like a one and a half quart little crock pot, this would not look so ridiculous because there's not that much in here, but you know, we work with what we have <laughs> instead of going to buy stuff all the time. So lid on, cook on, low for two-ish hours. You probably do high for one hour if you're serving it really soon. And what I love about this is it keeps it warm until you're ready to serve. I'm gonna go for high for one hour. Oh, oh, steaming up the camera. Come on. <laughs> okay, my little uh, cocktail, what do you call these? Cocktail hot dogs? What do you call these? Little Smokies? These are now hot. Everything has like kind of melted together. So pull out some toothpicks and get ready to serve these to your guests. Oh, they smell delicious. Give these a try and try and use a smaller crock pot. What do you guys think? Should I get a smaller crock pot? for dishes like this, or should I just use the big one because it's what I already have? Things turn around. They didn't ever think they could. I am feeling like dessert today, so we will make a fondue. There's two ways to do this. You could make it on the stove, throw it in your crock pot to keep warm as everybody dips their items into it, but I'm gonna try and melt everything in the crock pot itself. So first, let's spray the interior with some cooking spray. And just because we're working with marshmallows today and marshmallows are sticky. Step one, an entire container of marshmallow cream. And if you've never used this to make a fluffer nutter sandwich, which is peanut butter and marshmallow cream, you really need to try it. Like it's not good for you in any way at all. Hopefully if you're eating this, you're not under the illusion that it's good for you, but it tastes really, really good. It could be a fun treat. I actually didn't discover it until I was an adult. It wasn't something I'd ever heard of before. Can't remember why I learned about it in the first place. But anyway, we're gonna put this entire container in our crock pot here. This one's actually a Hamilton Beach, not a crock pot, but I call them all crock pots anyway. Do you guys ever watch How We Met Your Mother where Ted always corrects everybody on like, it's not a Kleenex, it's a facial tissue. Mm, technically water is a drink. 
It's not a crock pot, it's a slow cooker. <laughs> and if you get it on your finger, make sure you lick that off. One cup of actual marshmallows because a jar of marshmallow cream is not enough. Clearly, this is only a three quarter cup, so you see how I kind of spilled? That's about a cup. Eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, which is about half of that bag. And three tablespoons or so of half and half, so that's just shy of a quarter cup. Don't forget the vanilla. You don't have to measure that. That's all there is. I'm not really gonna stir it around because I just want it to kind of melt together. And because my slow cookers cook on kind of hot, honestly, I'm gonna put this on the keep warm function for a couple of hours until I am ready to dip my pretzels and my strawberries and my bananas in this. Okay, we're checking on the fondue because everything looks nice and Melty, ooh, yes. Just wanna make sure this can all come together. I think we can be about ready to dip some deliciousness in here. Look at this. I think we are there. Look how smooth this is, and I wish you could smell it because it smells so good. So time to get some dipping items. Of course, all the recipes will be linked down below, like always. If you wanna check out any of the other Crock-Pot videos that I have made, I will leave those down below. In fact, did you know that I have an entire cooking playlist with over 200 videos of all kinds of stuff? We've got stuff on a budget, cooking out of the pantry, how to make bread, how to make cookies, Crock-Pot, sheet pan dinners, extreme grocery budget challenges, all kinds of food going on up in here. So if you've not checked those out, those will all be linked down in the bloop bloop bloop. And if you wanna see upcoming videos from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out. I always love hanging out in the kitchen and cooking up some yummy treats to eat. And let me tell you what, I went out for that s'mores fondue with basically a spoon shoveling it into my mouth. It was really, really delicious and I regret nothing. I'll see you in the next one.